It's meant to be about the size of Big Ben, but how dangerous could it be and how much do we know about its trajectory? Someone who can help answer those questions, I hope, is Dr Jenny Millard, extra-galactic astronomer and co-presenter of the Awesome Astronomy podcast. You've got me worried now, Jenny. Um, is, is this a, a, an asteroid which seems to be heading directly at us? It has a small chance of coming towards us in December 2032, but that's as we understand it at the minute. This asteroid was only discovered at the end of December last year, so we've only been studying it for about six weeks. So we don't fully understand its orbit yet or even its size. It's nothing to worry about at this stage, even though the chance of it hitting our planet has gone up in recent days. This is exactly what we expect to happen when we first start studying these kind of asteroids. And in every other instance, once we've got enough data, that chance has dropped to zero. So don't worry at this stage. I said to my team at this stage in the show, can you find me a cheerful story? And they said, we've got an asteroid heading straight for Earth. But it turns out to be a bit more cheerful than I feared. Um, yeah. Can I ask, you? might seem a silly question, how do you start to track the trajectory of something so far away? Is it actually possible? It's an excellent question. So it's all about taking as many photographs of this asteroid in the night sky as we can. And this asteroid is moving rapidly compared to the background stars, which in these images are static. And so then by measuring how this asteroid is moving across these images, the time difference between these photographs, you can then start to build a trajectory using computer models. Now for this asteroid in particular, at the minute, we've caught it moving almost in a direct line away from us. That means it doesn't have much horizontal motion across the sky compared to how it's moving away. So that makes it quite difficult to accurately predict its orbit. And this is why we're sitting at this 1% to 2% chance of it hitting us, and we've not been able to eliminate it quickly. We're looking at it with the biggest ground-based telescopes. We're using the European Southern Observatory's very large telescope. I know it's a very imaginative name for that telescope. Mm. And we're also using the James Webb Space Telescope. So astronomers, we just need a little bit more time to understand trajectory. Well, keep us in touch. I said it was the size of Big Ben, but you don't really know. It could be the size of Ukraine. It could be the size of a packet of cornflakes. So the estimate at the minute, based on the amount of light it's reflecting, is somewhere between 40 and 90 metres. So that's essentially the Statue right. of Liberty with or without her plinth. That's what we're looking at. And again, the more data we get, the better we can then make estimates of its size. The terrifying prediction that a city-destroying asteroid is hurtling towards Earth has set alarm bells ringing at, wor at the world's space agencies. Now, a NASA scientist has predicted exactly where the asteroid 2024 YR4 God, could strike. Um, he sketched the risk corridor according to the asteroid's trajectory. Dr. Luca Conversi is manager of the European Space Agency's Near Earth Object Coordination Centre, heavily involved in monitoring the asteroid. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme, Luca. Um, so let's talk about, first of all, where this could hit if it does indeed hit. What is this corridor of, of impact? So the corridor as we know nowadays, uh, it's spun from roughly uh, the northern part of South America, it cross over the Atlantic Ocean, then it cross over uh, Africa, uh, more or less on the equator area, and then goes into the Indian Ocean up to uh, the southern part of Asia. So, so long... it's very wide. Yeah, very wide. It's, it's, it's very narrow. It's very thin, let's say, but it's very wide. And the reason is that we still have a lot of uncertainty of where this uh, asteroid uh, actually is. So it's basically the uncertainty is coming from the fact that it can hit, let's say, for example, at noon, or maybe it can hit at 1 p.m. And then, of course, the fact that in the meantime, the, the Earth is, is rotating, um, it, may, it may hit in, a, in a one position or the other. I, let, me, let me stress once again that at the moment, the impact probability is 2%, which means that 98% it will not hit any place yeah. on Earth. Um, so how, there is nothing to be worried about. Yeah. How um, how high a chance is that compared to other asteroids that are knocking around? I mean, is this the greatest chance that Earth has of being impacted by an asteroid since when? So in terms of size, uh, so first of all, we have... We are hit by asteroids every single day, just that they are very tiny. Usually they are below one meter or a few centimeters, so we don't even notice them. 
Anytime you see a shooting star, it's basically a very yeah. tiny asteroid that is entering the atmosphere. So this is bigger, this is 50 meters in size, and it is the biggest in terms of size, in terms of probability, we found in the last 20 years or so. The previous one was, it's called Apophis, and that's even bigger, it's 300 meters, and oh, when it God. was discovered, it reached 3% impact probability, that was in 2004. But then with more observations, we, we managed to understand that it was not going to hit, it was just flying yeah. by Earth, very close, but... Um, if this thing is 50 meters uh, wide, um, what chance, if it does hit Earth, that it, it burns up on entry and, you know, a small chunk is left smoldering somewhere in the Indian Ocean? I say if it hits Earth, it will reach the ground and it will produce a damage. Uh, now, the amount of this damage depends, of course, on the, where it will land. So it, if it lands on the water, probably it will create almost nothing. If it land on, for example, on a desertic area as well, it will not uh, um, do any any big damage. Mm -hmm. But of course, if it lands on a populated area, it is more dangerous. And that's one of the things that needs to be followed up on. Yes. Is it more dangerous, um, like, uh, God forbid, but do you remember the explosion in Beirut, for example, in Lebanon a few years ago, which which caused a huge amount mm -hmm. of damage and, and killed people and what have you, and then the arms munitions went up. Are we, are we talking that or are we talking cities levelled? Something in between. Uh, we don't really know, but uh, but then again, uh, we don't, don't be worried that it's, uh, the, the chances that it will hit a city is, is really yeah. negligible. Um, and go on, Luca. Go on. Put our put our minds at ease, I'm, doctor. <laughs> no, and, and and in any case, I mean, we have means to deflect it if if all comes to worse. Now, this is what I want to get into. So we now discover in 2031 that this thing is going to hit. It's like a 90 percent chance or whatever. Um, what do you guys do? What does NASA do? What does uh, what what happens to get this thing out of our way? So first of all, we still have two months to observe it, so we can observe it until end of May, uh, April, sorry. And during these two months, we believe we will be able to uh, be sure that we, it will not hit Earth. If that's not the case, we will re-observe it in 2028, when, when it will become visible again. Mm -hmm. And by then, we will know for sure if it's going to hit or not, and where. So then we have this period between now and 2028 uh, to eventually prepare a mission and launch it and this mission would impact the asteroid and push it away. That's one, one option that is on the table. Of course, it needs to be studied in more details because there are consequences in doing so. Mm -hmm. Because well, by hitting the asteroid, the asteroid most likely will break apart. Oh, yeah. And then you have uh, smaller pieces. Multi-attack. Uh, Multi-attack, if you wish. But, but then again, they, they are smaller pieces, so maybe all of them will be pushed away, or maybe not. It's yeah. one of the things that it's not easy to uh, to assess just in a, in a few days. Okay, so we need to touch base again in two months to check on your findings, and then we'll call back in 2028 and say, what the hell do we do about it? Thank you very much, Dee, for coming on.